Today I am painting the 13B Turbo 2 block for my practice FC. <laughs> everyone I am starting the rebuild process for my 13b for the party FC today the first part of doing a rebuild after everything's been cleaned and prepped properly which you can see that in some previous videos that I've done I was cleaning the rotors and all that stuff which takes forever so after those parts are cleaned really the assembly process is starting now. Today I'm gonna to be assembling rotors for the 13B. I've helped out with rebuilding rotors before, helping out and learning at the same time here with Garage Life. This will be the first time that I'm doing this on the channel and I'm still definitely gonna have Garage Life around because this is serious stuff. Like you do not wanna mess this up and there's so many like small intricate details that you have to make sure that you get right. This thing is gonna be running really really soon so I wanted to take you guys along for how I'm rebuilding this thing and how it all works. Let's go learn how to rebuild some rotors. <laughs> okay so for the purpose of everyone being able to follow along really easily we're gonna have a really quick rotary 101. For today I'm reassembling the rotors. I'm actually using all of my 20B parts to explain all of this but again we are rebuilding the 13B on the channel first. So what goes into rebuilding the rotors? Most of this work is just going into installing all of the seals. So you have three main seals on a rotor as well as oil control rings. The first thing that I'm gonna be doing is installing the oil control rings right here. There's two, one on the outside and then one on the inside. And each face of the rotor has their own set of rings. These are the oil control rings. You can usually reuse them pretty often. Uh, you can see where on the side to determine if they're good or not. For the oil control rings, before you install those, you have to set the oil control ring springs. And it is very crucial that you get the direction of the spring correct, depending on which face of the rotor that you're working on. A lot of detail that goes into this and you have to get all of this right. After the oil control rings are installed, then you're gonna be installing all of the seals. There are three main seals. You have your side seals, you have your corner seals, which are right here, and then you have your apex seals, which sit right here. For all of the seals, there are corresponding springs. Just like the oil control rings had their spring that you put in ahead of time, all of these seals also have springs. This is a corner seal, a spring for the corner seal, side seal. These are the springs for the side seals. These are the apex seals, springs for the apex seals. So really quick, I just wanted to give you guys a rotary 101 so you know what's going on. I think that's pretty much it for building rotors. Really quick, we're gonna recap everything. There are three major seals when you're rebuilding rotors. We have the side seals, which are on every side, on both faces of the rotor. We have the corner seals, which are on the corners, both sides, and then we have our apex seals. know what's going on let's get it <laughs> the first part of a rebuild is building the rotors the first thing you have to do for that is install the oil control rings now that you've labeled which rotor is gonna be which so this is gonna be your front mm -hmm. start with the front first okay. and then do the front stuff assemble it and then when you're done turn it around testing you oh wait what, wait. what side is this this is the front Okay. And so, the front, the left side goes down on yeah, the spring. The which side? The squared part or the round part? The left side goes okay, down. Perfect. Yeah. The round part. Perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like a lot of pressure. Oh yeah. If something goes wrong, then it's just it's all it's all on, it's all on mm -hmm. me. For the control rings, you put the spring in first. The actual ring goes in second. The round part, it like points down 
The front face, it points down and needs to go into the hole on the left side, right? And then the rear one, it points down and goes into the stopper hole on the right side. Basically, it matters how you install the springs, whether it's the front face of the rotor or the rear face. Right now, I'm just trying to make sure that I line everything up perfectly, because yeah. if it doesn't work, then it's my fault. Where the actual ring sits on the spring has to be in an exact spot too. So there's like a mark on the ring. There's a mark right there. It can grab the spring underneath, so you need to make sure you place this exactly where the spring underneath is coming up on one side. Nailed it! Now we're going to do the same thing on the rear face of the rotor. And then I'll repeat the entire process for this back rotor as well. And I've already determined that this is the front one and this is the rear assembly rotor. Rotary things. For the rear, it is opposite for what part of the spring goes into the stopper. So if on the front, the left part went into the stopper, on the rear, the right part of the spring the right round part is gonna go into the stopper. I have to remember that. So this one, the right part is going down. And this one, the right part is going down. And again, I'm putting these exactly so that the indention in here catches on the spring. I didn't even have Gilbert double check it. I'm just sending it, you know? So hopefully I did it right. If it uh, blows up, it's probably my fault, but you know what, whatever. <laughs> They're just gonna have to trust me. <laughs> I mean, I did it with the spring on the right, the stopper that's round, pointed down on the right side and put it in. So you know what, just gonna have to send it. Okay. And then now, cause you have to pre-assign um, which is front and rear. We're writing it cause you might forget. So I'm putting an F because this is the front and then R in case someone tries to sabotage. Front one is done for oil control rings. Now it is the rear. It's opposite for the rear rotor. So what was the front on the front rotor is now the rear. So I am starting with the spring pointed down on the right for the rear. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. this is now the rear, not the front. Yeah. are now done. The oil control rings, at least, are installed in the front and rear of both rotors. So now I'm going to do side seal springs, the side seals, then the corner seal springs, and the corner seals. One quick note about the side seal springs, there is a correct way to put them in. The end piece, you want that to be sticking up. So for the side seals, this is where it gets a little more complicated and tedious and time consuming. Usually these come a lot longer than what will fit. You have to custom cut these down little by little to get it exactly right. It takes a while. This is a little, a little bit of pressure here because if you mess up, there is usually not an extra side seal in a kit. So that's a little stressful. There is a specific side that you're supposed to cut. Um, these come with one side usually angled and then one side flat. So you wanna cut the flat side and make the flat side have an angle when you're cutting it. Wish me luck. I've actually never done this part before, so.
side. I have one side done. It's kind of hard to explain like the tolerance that you want to go for. I mean, let's see if I can show this. You can kind of see the tolerance there. So it's not very much at all. It's like a very, very tiny amount. It is super easy to overcut one of these. So that's why I was just going back and forth a million times to get it right. And they should be springy with the spring underneath and feel pretty even all around. So now I just have to repeat this entire process on the other side. Moment of truth. Perfect. Perfect? <gasps> Maybe a little more. So. Mm. Uh, not yet, perfect. I would say that might. Alright, so that's pretty good. I had one of them that I needed to shave off a tiny bit more, but I'll take that. I'll take that. of each of the rotors. Now I'm gonna put in the apex seals. For this 13B Turbo 2 setup, I'm actually gonna be using three mil apex seals. So that's larger than the standard two mil, which means that these rotors have been machined at a machine shop to take a three mil apex seal. So these apex seals are the three mil ones, which means they are just thicker in size. Sometimes you get it to where maybe it's tighter at one end and the other and then you have to file down where the apex seals go so that it fits. I'm gonna check the fitment on both of these rotors. rotor looks awesome they all kind of just fall in with gravity which is what you want so all the three mil ones fit good oh no yeah this one is not good it goes down on this side but it's getting caught on this side this side is not good there's tension kind of all the way across but mostly on this side unfortunately i'm gonna have to file this one out so this one is really tight as well it's really tight on this side like you can see when i'm pressing on it it's like fighting me man i'm gonna have to really file this one down as well man so this side is pretty tight too Oh, the first rotor was great. The three mils just went straight in. This rotor, however, is struggling hard. Pretty much every side for the apex seal spot needs to be filed out. It's not too bad, but it definitely needs to be filed. So now you're gonna learn how to do that too. <laughs> That is what we want. You want it to just, bam, fall in like that. Like gravity should just pull it down. Now this one is fixed. Let's just see how bad this one was. It's really just on this one side. This side is sticking up way higher because it hits sooner. So that 
that's pretty good. This one is being a little bit more difficult. I filed it down a little bit, but you do not want to file down too much because there's no going back if you do that. And seeing as how I'm this far on these rotors, I don't want to mess it up. So this last one, I'm going to wait until DK gets back to just double check, take a look at it uh, before we stack the engine. It'll be a very quick fix, I'm sure, for him. So I'm going to let, you know, the pros make the final say on this Apex Seal slot. But we're done checking all the other ones. So for all the other Apex Seals, I can go ahead and install them now. For the Apex Seals, I'm kind of just setting them, not really fully installing them, because you put the spring in once you are assembling and stacking the engine. So for now, I'm just gonna take all the seals, put grease underneath them so it makes them sort of sticky, and then put them in place, and then we're done. hold off on assembling the weird rotor that the slots are kind of messed up on. I'm sure it's a really, really easy fix that you just do by filing out, but I want to make extra, extra sure that I'm doing things properly, so I'm going to wait until DK from Garage Life is back here just to double check on this one, but this guy is done. So now you guys know how to assemble a rotor. I think it's a pretty cool process and honestly this has been perfect warm-up for me building my 20B because now I'm going for, you know, a test drive before I get to the crazy 20B build. And the only difference is on the 20B I got one more rotor to do. So there you have it. That is how you put together your rotors and the next step is stacking the engine. So that's what we're gonna be doing in my next video. I'm really, really excited. I've helped out with a few engines here and there. Haven't done my own yet. So this is gonna be my first rotary build on this channel. And it's with the crazy block that you guys saw that I painted that looks insane, which makes me even more excited. I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to do this stuff. And in the next video, we're gonna be stacking.